Okay, I have 10.31, so I am happy to begin. Um, sounds like we're supposed to start at 10.30. I'm going to try to speak into this microphone. Um, is this on? Is that hearing? Cool. I might have to just lean forward like this. That'll be a little awkward. Cool. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, this is um, how Bryn Mawr uses a group for access management. Um, when I did a drive run of this in front of my boss, my boss recommended I call you all groupies um, and other various puns. Um, but because this is going to be on YouTube, I won't do that. Um, if you guys didn't like that joke, it's going to be a really long session. Um, I'm Michael Harris. I'm a web applications developer at Bryn Mawr. Uh, the slides, I posted a link to the slides on the uh, Drupal Camp New Jersey website, so if you want to follow along. I, I try not to do too many screenshots of code, because uh, that's terrible, but there is one, so if you want to dig deeper into that. Um, yeah, so there we go. Um, so if you don't know what Bryn Mawr is, uh, I'll tell you sort of who we are. Uh, we're a historic residential women's college in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. That's sort of on the main line, uh, Philly suburbs. Uh, we were established in 1885. Uh, we do a lot of things with Haverford and Swarthmore. Uh, our students can take courses at their classes and vice versa. do a lot of things with Penn as well. Um, it's mostly undergraduate. We have three graduate programs, but I think um, of those 1,700, or we have about 1,780 students, and of those 1,780 students, um, I think about 1,700 of them, or uh, above 1,600 of them are undergrad, so really undergrad residence focused. Um, it's beautiful. Um, you should visit. Um, we're a fully remote team, so uh, I would give you a tour, but I won't be there. Um, but it's lovely, and you should visit. Um, about our website, uh, we have a Drupal 9 website. We launched that website in February 2022. Uh, prior to that, we... Uh, migrated from Drupal 7. Um, it's a big migration. Um, the vendor we used for our website was iFactory. They are um, a shop out of Boston. Uh, very smart, uh, very uh, helpful. Uh, I learned a lot from working with them. Um, what does our website do? Our website does everything. Um, I know that a lot of schools um, will have like different websites for like the English department, the math department but not us. Um, our website is everything from marketing to academic information to general information, human resources. Um, it's everything but our learning management system, basically. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a monolith. To give you a sense of that monolith, we have about 11,000 nodes. Uh, we have about 400 very enthusiastic, authenticated users. Um, and when I say sort of very enthusiastic, um, I haven't looked at the numbers recently, but it's well over 200 users who are like actively creating and editing content like on a regular basis. So it's, it's, it's a lot of folks and our users feel very a strong sense of ownership um, over their content. Um, uh, we we uh, very briefly contemplated a model of uh, moving uh, sort of workflows to um, a centralized small number of editors um, that would sort of edit the whole site and quickly, quickly realized um, our users would revolt. Um, people want access to their stuff, they think it's theirs. They just have a lot of ownership over their notes. And they want us to help them get in and they want us to uh, get out of their way. They don't want us to approve anything they post, they just want to post their stuff. Um, we have about 16 content types. Um, we have about 50 paragraph types. Um, it's just a big site, is what I'm trying to trying to get at. It's, it's big, and it's everything that the college does. Um, so we have our permission problems are um, not that exotic. They're kind of boring. Um, we just have the typical permission problems that a large website with a lot of users would have. So like, how do we restrict users to just be able to edit their department nodes and no one else's? So if I'm the math administrative admin, um, how can I just edit the math notes and not the English notes? Um, how do we keep the, the, the chemistry folks from invading the biology section and, and, and blah, blah, blah? Um, 
you know, uh, uh, roles and global roles and permissions don't give you that. You have to go to contrib. Um, and then within a department, um, how do we give some users different permissions than others? So maybe uh, if we if we go back to the math department, um, you know, some of our our, our basic uh, editors, maybe we hire a student. We don't want to give that student the run of the whole, you know, uh, the whole uh, department's uh, web pages. We just want to give them a few web pages. Um, but you know, we want to give um, other people, you know, even more things. So even within the department, how do we give different levels of permission? Like, and again, these are straightforward permission questions that sort of like most uh, Drupal websites of any size will have. The way that we solved this problem in Drupal 7 was the organic groups module. Um, if you're not familiar with organic groups, um, the way it works is you have your node and you have your term. Your term, um, it can be a different entity type, but I think most people use terms. Um, your term um, acts as the organic group. And then on your node, you just have an entity reference uh, to the term. And organic group um, handles the permission and access uh, sort of magically based on that entity reference field. Um, and I'm not going to get too deep into the technical underpinnings, but this data model is a little bit important. Um, that's what we did in Drupal 7. It was great. There's a lot of contributed modules that uh, support organic group. I mean, organic groups is a contributed module, but there's a lot of other uh, modules that support that kind of stuff that we were happy to leverage as well. Um, it worked great for us in Drupal 7. Um, so why did we move away from organic groups in uh, Drupal 9? Uh, one reason was a change in our IA approach. Um, in Drupal 7, we really used OG menu. And what OG menu does is for every um, organic group you have, it would automatically provision um, a menu and it would restrict the nodes in that organic group just to that menu. So we had you know, well over 100 organic groups. And so we would have well over 100 menus to manage and each menu would have, you know, in some cases, just two or three nodes, in some cases, like eight or 10 or 12, in some places, you know, closer to 30 or 40 or 50. But like, we had a lot of relatively small menus, and that was our information architecture approach in Drupal 7. In Drupal 9, we have um, just a few menus, and those menus have, um, in some cases, hundreds of nodes each. So it was a, a big shift in um, IA approach. Um, that sort of led to us to sort of reevaluate what we needed. Um, another reason was uh, security and reliability. Uh, Bryn Mawr, we're pretty conservative in um, the kinds of modules uh, we install on our sites. And as of yesterday uh, morning, I don't maybe it's changed today, but as of yesterday, um, organic groups. Um, after seven was still in um, is it alpha or beta I don't know but it, you know we don't like to run alpha or beta modules in production if we can um, get away if we can avoid it I mean we have to do it sometimes but we avoid it as much as we can um, a lot of the organic group support modules are still in alpha and beta for for Drupal eight Drupal nine um, OG menu the menuing um, uh, module I just mentioned still in uh, either alpha or beta uh, we we just try to avoid that in production. So in Drupal 9, we use the group module. Um, and the group module, it accomplishes basically the same functionality, but the, um, it has some differences. One of the really big differences is sort of the underlying data, uh, sort of the underlying data model, how it works. Um, you have your node and you have your group. Interestingly, you know, in organic groups, um, you will typically take a vocabulary and you will turn those vocabulary terms into your organic groups. Um, in group, they just create a group entity type, so you're not sort of piggybacking off of a different um, entity type. Um, but you also have this middle um, entity, which is called a group content entity. And the way that a node knows what group it's in and a way that a group knows which nodes are in it is that um, middle entity will reference both the node and the group. Um, so if you're writing your custom code, uh, I actually find this easier to write custom code for, for um, group because um, it, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but I think it, it, it makes sense. Um, this is also true for users. 
Um, so if you, you, um, if you want to associate a user with a group, um, there is sort of that middle entity as well, which references your user um, and your group as well. So sort of that's the underlying data model. And that, I, that's almost as technical as we're going to go. Um, how used to, okay, so, so, so that's sort of group. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of how to set up group, and I'm going to spend most of the rest of the time talking about sort of the customizations that we make uh, to make group work for us. Because group out of the box, I don't think group out of the box would work for anyone. You have to spend some time uh, customizing a little bit. So the basics of configuring group, um, you have to create group types, which are like entity types or content types. Um, we only have one group type, um, so this really isn't relevant for us, but you do have to create a group type before you can create a group. Um, and then for each group type, you, um, you select which nodes are sort of quote unquote groupable, and that's sort of uh, my term, it's not a group term. Um, but by default, uh, you can't put uh, nodes in the group, you have to turn on um, the, the group membership uh, potentiality for each content type. So you can say, I want my basic pages to be able to be put into groups, but I don't want my news articles to be put into groups, or whatever makes sense for your business purposes. Um, and then for each group, you can, or for each group type, um, you can create sort of granular roles and permissions with, within that group type. So you can take a, um, an authenticated user who has no special permissions on a global level within your site and then make them like the super duper admin of your group. Um, and, you know, organic groups has, you know, similar kinds of, you know, ways to create uh, differentiated permissions. I, I'm not that familiar with other sort of access management modules, but I, I assume these kinds of things are sort of standard features. Um, and I'll show you a little bit about how we configure our uh, group roles in just a moment. Um, so how group roles work, there are three group roles that come out of the box and then you can create your own. The first is anonymous. Um, and from the group perspective, you are an anonymous user if you don't have a Drupal account. This maps on directly to the global anonymous role. Um, it's the same way. And then there's outsider. Um, an outsider means you're an authenticated user, but you're not a member of the group. Um, so if you are, um, let's say you're the editor of the math department, you would be an outsider to the English department group. And that sort of affects what permissions you might have on the English department nodes. Um, if you're a member, that just means you're a part of the group. Um, uh, and this sort of maps onto the, um, in theory, to the global authenticated role. It just means you have some association to the group. And then you should create custom roles, um, which can, you, you can change the permissions. Um, one more slide of text, and then I've got some, some more interesting things to show you. Um, how group permissions work. Um, if a node is in a group, um, then the user must meet the group level permissions to perform the action on the node. So for example, um, if your authenticated users have permission um, to edit the nodes that they own, but within your group you say you can't edit the nodes you own unless you have the particular group role, then the, your user might not be able to edit their own um, node unless they also have the group role. Um, so this is a set of permissions that you have to meet sort of, um, uh, I don't want to say on top of the global roles, but sort of um, you have to meet your group level permissions. And group level permissions is a little bit confusing. I might be getting some of these details wrong. Um, we occasionally get tickets that so-and-so doesn't have permission, which we think we should, and you know we check the check boxes we think. And when it works, we don't always understand it. We just you know export it and commit it. And um, because this stuff is a little bit of a black box to us, I think I understand it, but I might be getting it wrong. Um, but I think this is how it works. You have to meet your group permissions um, sort of regardless of what your global permissions say you can do. Um, if a node is not in a group, um, then just the global permissions apply. Um, so I'm going to show you a screenshot of how we've configured our group roles and permissions. Um, you know, this screen feels very familiar if you've ever done uh, global roles and permissions. It's just, you know, a table with a lot of checkboxes. Um, 
And as you can see, um, I'm just showing you like the basic page. So we, I'm showing sort of uh, a, a screenshot of two content types. One is called basic page and one is called courses. Those are two of our workhorse content types on the site. Um, you know, we, we, we set the view permissions um, at the group level. So, so if we want to let anonymous users view a node, we have to set it at the group level that anonymous have permission to view the node. It's, it's not enough to give global anonymous permission to view the node. We also have to give it at the group level. Um, so we give our admins and our content editors out of the box, um, basic page, you know, create edit, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But then for that courses content type, um, we have sort of specialized roles. We have specialized roles called course editor, honor roll editor, homepage editor, story editor. Those are just different content types we have that we want to give additional permissions around. So just because you're a member of the group doesn't mean you can edit these other kind of content types unless you also have the special role. Um, and that's how we're able to say if a student, we want to give them permission to edit um, you know, the, um, so we, we, we have a, a social work section of our um, website, brenmar.edu slash social work. Um, and that brenmar.edu slash social, social work is a homepage content type. Um, and if we hire a student to edit social work nodes, we probably don't want them editing the homepage, we just want them to edit some basic page. So we put them in the group, we give them group editor, but we don't give them homepage editor, and that's how we restrict which kind of content types. Um, they can edit even if they're in the group. Um, and, th and this is just, you know, I, I think this is, I mean, it's more checkboxes because it's Drupal permissions, but what do you do? Um, how this implicates site-wide roles and permissions, um, I advise just like not giving many permissions to your global roles in general. Um, to the extent possible, if you're gonna use group, I recommend trying to do as many permissions as you can at the group level. Um, there is a, a, a global permission called bypass group access control, which basically means these users get to skip the group authentication part. Um, so like, I am a, I am a web developer at Bryn Mawr, so I am a site admin. I should get permissions to everything. Um, and we have uh, about, at this point, 80 or 90 uh, groups on our Drupal 9 website. I'm not a member of every group, um, because that would, that would be tedious. Um, our colleagues in the communications office, they also have sort of super user permissions, but they're not members of every group. So we give those roles to bypass group access control uh, rather than adding them to every group and then giving them every role in every group. So um, here is a screenshot of our uh, global, um, our global um, roles and permissions. And there aren't a lot of checkboxes checked except for those two sort of super roles. Um, you know, these, is, these are the, um, the edit any and edit own um, permissions globally, and we just don't check things because we check them at the group level rather than at the role level. Um, so that's sort of uh, how group works. I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about um, sort of the things we do. Um, we only have one group type. In theory, you can have multiple group types with multiple different uh, things. Uh, we, don't, we, we don't do that. We're, we're easy. Um, we don't turn on node type, we don't turn on like the group ability for all node types. Um, and the reason for that is we have some content types that only our friends in the communications department should be able to edit. Um, that, uh, those content types are announcements and events. Any user, even anonymous users, can submit the announcements and event. We turn on the, the add node form to, to, to everyone, even anonymous users. But once that node is created, only our friends in the communications office will edit that. So there's no reason for that to be in a group because only our, our, our um, super users will touch those nodes after they're created. So we don't turn on um, group for those kinds of content types, but we do for everything else. Um, we say that nodes may belong to at most one group. It's in theory possible to allow for groups to, or for allow for a node to belong to two different groups. Um, we haven't explored what the implications of that. I, there are resources over there uh, uh, which describe how it works. We don't know, so we don't know what their pitfalls are. Um, I really hope we never get this request, but um, if we do get this request, um, it's something we can look at. 
Um, and if that makes uh, uh, sense for your business case, it's something you can look at as well. Um, and like I showed you, uh, we have group roles that restrict, create, and edit permissions to particular content types. So just because you're in the group, you can't edit all the content types in the group. Um, so our pain points and customizations are on group because you can't use group just out of the box. Uh, we've had some pain points, so I want to talk about how we overcome them. Um, the first pain point I want to talk about is group entity pages. Um, we, because we have these groups set up and because we have all of our users in groups, we don't really want our users using the black admin bar to create and manage content. We want them to do everything from their group home page. We teach people if you're in the math department, you don't go to the admin content, you don't go to admin uh, create content, you go to your math group page. And your math group page is where you create nodes, because if you create a node from the black toolbar, um, it doesn't have a group association, but if you create a node from your math department homepage, Drupal will automatically create the association. So we want people to go straight to the math department. Um, this is the um, group entity page out of the box. It is nothing. Um, so you have to spend some time making this group entity page um, work for you if you want, uh, like we want to, tell our users, okay, you start your work at your group homepage and you do all of your work from your group homepage rather than using the, the, the black toolbar. Um, this is how we've customized um, what a, a, a default group page might look like after we've put in the effort. This is our math group page. You can see at the bottom there's a, a, a list of nodes and then at the top there's some help text, um, like some important links. Um, we, we said, you know, um, you know, announcements and event, those content types aren't turned on for group, um, but we provide a link to create things from there anywhere because it's too confusing to tell people. For, you know, announcements and events, go to the black toolbar, but for everything else, go to your group homepage, which is take your group homepage for everything. Um, we also, you can't see it in this screenshot, but you'll be able to see it in the next screenshot. We, we pre-populate links to create nodes based on their group permission. So um, we have a section called, um, I'm just gonna go to the next slide. Uh, we have a section called add content to mathematics or add content to group name. Um, that wasn't on the previous slide because I took the screenshot from a user who is a member of the group but doesn't have any roles that would give them editing permissions or create permissions. Um, you know, in our, our, our hook pre-process, you know, um, you know, group uh, function, you know, we, we, we ask group, the, the group API is straightforward enough that we can ask the group, okay, what node, con what, what content types does this user have permission to create for this node? And for each of those, provide a link to create that node. So, you know, this user has permission to create basic page, news, and honor roll doesn't have permission to create a few different other entity types. Um, but if we, you know, if we gave this user a new permission tomorrow, that link would magically show up because uh, we can pre-process it and ask group to tell me, you know, what are the permissions that this user has? And, and, and that's a really nice um, efficiency for us. It's much better than a blank page. Um, another big pain point is assigning nodes to groups. You know, as I mentioned, we have 11,000 nodes on our website. Um, when we migrated, we migrated 10,000-ish, give or take a thousand, I don't actually remember. Um, but we did the migration before we had group set up. So, so group is, uh, um, so this idea of group was great, but we just had, you know, 80 or 90 empty groups and we needed to start putting nodes in groups. Um, the default form for assigning nodes to group looks like this. It's just you. Um, it's just the title. Um, you have to fill out a URL alias, which is confusing. That is a URL alias for the bridge entity in the middle. Because it's an entity, it can have a URL alias. It's weird to think about those middle entities having URL a aliases, but they're entities, so they can't. Um, but you know, it, it would be painful just to say, um, you know, I go to the math department, I say there's a link that's like, add content to this group, and it opens this form, 
and you type in the title and you hit save and that's how your already existing node is added to the group. We don't want to fill out this form by hand 10,000 times. That's a pain. Um, we also have, when you have 10,000 nodes and you have um, uh, very independent-minded uh, content editors, they want to, um, you end up with a lot of nodes with the same name, so this form really doesn't help. So, so how did we get around that? Um, we created a custom views bulk action. Um, so um, as part of our migration, we kept the Drupal 7 um, entity, re the, the organic groups uh, term reference, and we basically said if you're in the Drupal 7 math group, run this views bulk operation, assign you to the Drupal 9 math group. Um, we assigned thousands of nodes thanks to this custom uh, views bulk operation action. Um, it's not something we could contrib back because uh, we hard coded a lot of our own, um, you know, assumptions for how we set things up. But um, you know, don't don't actually read this code. But my point is that it's not a lot of code. Um, they're entities. They work like you would expect them to work. Um, we didn't do our dependency injection perfectly here, so um, you can go, you know, nitpick there if you want. But you know, it's um, it, it's not hard to write this. Um, you know, VBO action to bulk assign your stuff. Um, so bulk assigning was great, but one of the nice things about um, organic groups was that because it's a term reference field on the node in organic groups in Drupal 7, when you're editing the node, you can reassign the group membership. In Drupal 9, that doesn't exist out of the box. There's no term reference on the node itself um, to the group, so you can't out of the box, edit the node to change the group. Um, we created a form alter to do that. Um, basically, if your node is not in a group, it will say your node is not in a group, and it will give you all of your groups. And you can just select one and save the node, and that's how I can reassign the group when I edit the node. Or if it's already in the group, it will tell me what group it's in, I can check remove it from the group, and if so, I can reassign it. Um, and that just makes it so that we can assign or reassign um, the, um, the group membership on the edit node form, which is like the intuitive place to do it. Um, that's not out of the box in group. That's something we wrote for ourselves. Um, the last uh, sort of customization we made was around reporting, because um, it's helpful to know uh, how things are going. The default group listing we didn't find helpful for our needs. Um, we only have one group type. Our group type is called group. That's very confusing, but it's already um, you know, been committed, so it's too late to change that. Um, uh, so we don't need that type column. We also don't need that owner column. Every group is owned by um, S user, who is our user one. Um, but again, because these are entities, we can just create our own view and replace the default uh, group listing. We replace it with, uh, we get rid of those columns we don't need, and then we add a column for the number of users in the group and the number of nodes in the group. And that's been helpful because after we assign everything, we can look at our list and be like, you know, this group only has like three nodes and zero users, maybe we can get rid of it and, and reassign it, or maybe we can combine, you know, two groups into one. That's been helpful for sort of clean up, making sure that we don't have groups out there that just aren't being used. Um, another useful report that we wrote, we just created this um, view ourselves, is it's a list of all of our users and what their global role is and then what groups they belong to. I didn't include um, the user column because I didn't want you to see all of their usernames. Um, so pretend there's a username column right there. Um, but yeah, we can say there's no way out of the box to say, you know, um, you know my, so my username is M. Harris. So like M. Harris, what groups is he in? There, there, there wasn't an easy way to see that um, until we created this report. Um, and this report is helpful. Um, it's really helpful like when someone leaves the college and be like, we need to transfer their responsibilities. It's like, oh, you know, um, you know, Jane Smith was in XYZ group. We need to make sure that, you know, Jane Smith's replacement is also in XYZ group. Um, so that's very helpful. Um, the last report that we created um, was our um, nodes that are not in a group report. Um, I think from a good hygiene perspective, if you're going to turn on the group ability for a content type, then all nodes in that content type should be in a group. Um, it's weird to have like 
half of your basic pages in a group and half of your basic pages not in a group. It gets access confusing when you're writing custom code because sometimes your code is working because you know the group permissions are applying and sometimes they're not or, or vice versa. So it's my goal to have all of our groupable nodes in a group. Um, we're not there yet. Uh, we still have a few hundred nodes that haven't been assigned to groups, but this report helps. We can just say, uh, you know, um, you know, we can filter by content type, we can filter whether it's published, we can see what the path is. Um, it's just um, um, a, a view to tell us which uh, nodes are not in a group so that when we have some downtime, we can just start assigning them to groups. Um, so my final thoughts on group, um, it works pretty well for us. It does uh, things we need it to do. And it was um, a bit of a learning curve, but it was easy enough uh, to set up. Our user case is fairly straightforward. We only have one group type. We only let, let nodes be in one group. Um, we haven't gotten the request yet for the same node to be in, in, in two groups. And I cross my fingers every night that we don't get that request. Um, we also don't put our content through moderation states. We have published and unpublished. We don't need to go through a whole workflow. We're not using anything at work. But, so we don't know what kinds of, 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 of complications that might introduce. So we can't speak to that complexity. Um, there's a learning curve for the roles and permissions. I was um, writing I was writing a form alter the other day, and half the time it was working, and half the time it wasn't. And then it's because it, you know it took me a while to realize, oh, this is a content type that um, is in a group, and but half the nodes are in groups and half are not. So I need to you know account for that in my you know in my form alter, and, and then it worked. But there's a learning curve for it. Um, it can take a little bit of guesswork and a little bit of intuition to know which which things are global things and which things are group level things and you just have to kind of feel that out. Um, and you should expect to do a lot of quality of life work around um, your groups because like I said, you know, group out of the box, it doesn't give you a lot of quality of life stuff. Group is really just, it's really just the content and it's really just the, the entities and it's really just the permissions. Um, you, you have to do your own work to make the, 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 the group entity page, look useful, you have to write your own custom reports, things like that. So you should expect to do a lot of work beyond just turning it on. Um, links, uh, brenmar.edu, uh, drupal.org slash project slash group. Um, any questions for how we're using group? Okay, um, I'm, I'm happy to hang up or hang out um, here for a few minutes or grab me at any point during the day. Um, this is on uh, Drupal Camp New Jersey's YouTube page, so uh, smash that like button. Um, thanks, everybody.